Hi folks, this is Nathan Pierce with Family Protection Ministries. I have a legislative update for you today. Uh, nothing legislative, but um, more focused on a couple of orders and guidance. Uh, so I have two things to talk about today from the uh, California Department of Public Health that relate to education, and then uh, one item from the California Department of Education relating to education. So let's go ahead and get started with the CDPH, California Department of Public Health. There have been two orders over the last few weeks. Uh, the first related to masks in education, uh, masks in schools um, for both uh, for teachers and for students. Uh, then the second order has to do with uh, shots, uh, vaccines, vaccine verification, and testing for teachers and school workers and volunteers in public and private schools. Both of these orders related to both public and private schools. So I'm going to talk about both of them sort of together because they both apply and don't apply to the same uh, sets of groups. So let's talk about single family private schools first. People that file a private school affidavit don't need to worry about these orders, either one of them. Uh, for their own families because if you are schooling at home, you've created your own private school, um, you're not functioning at some other facility, uh, a public school or private school facility, which is the focus here of these orders, um, you are at home and you don't need to worry about these two orders. The uh, situation with a PSP or a private school satellite program or umbrella school is a little bit different situation and um, they vary in how they would fall under these orders. So um, the most basic level here to, to address this is whether or not a school has classes. So for example, if a PSP or umbrella school does not have uh, classes, they just file paperwork and they oversee and um, uh, monitor the uh, progress of students and they don't offer in-person classes, then this order, these orders do not apply. However, in the situation where you have a PSP that does those things, plus they do offer uh, classes, in-person classes, that's gonna be a different situation. It's gonna fall under more of the guidance as though it were a, a typical um, in-person campus private school. So if there is a private school with a facility, that's what these orders are relating to. Private schools, public schools with facilities, that's who it applies to. So if you have a, a private school um, PSP that has a facility where you're meeting um, in person with students and um, they're taking classes there, that is something that you're gonna need to look at these orders more carefully. I'll link them below so you can look into them more. And as always, I'm not an attorney and I'm not giving you legal advice. So take a look at uh, these orders for yourself and contact home, uh, Homeschool Legal Defense Association and ask them uh, if you have any specific legal questions about these orders and how they would apply to you and your school. So lastly is the item from the Department of Education. As I mentioned, uh, one item from the Department of Education is uh, in the form of guidance is not written to homeschool families or even to private schools, but rather it is written to public schools and local education agencies, the administrators of public schools and um, the county superintendents, folks like that. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because a number of folks have had issues withdrawing their students from, from public schools where administrators are giving them uh, difficulty explaining that they can't withdraw until they file a private school affidavit, which the private school affidavit is not currently available online. You have to wait till the uh, October 1st through 15th filing period to file the affidavit. And so there's a, a lot of uh, jumbled confusion about this, as you might expect. But to make it very simple, the Department of Ed has issued this statement, which I will link below, saying that public schools do need to allow students to withdraw to transfer to a private school, whether that's a, a private campus school or a, another private school that has been established by parents, and allow them to uh, school their children at home uh, until the uh, filing period in October 
and verify those private school affidavits at that time instead of forcing parents to uh, have to not withdraw their children until that affidavit becomes available online. So that has been clarified by the Department of Ed and I am grateful for that and appreciate their uh, work on this and getting this posted online. So you can take a look at that, uh, those instructions to the LEAs um, uh, at the link below as well. And I would just uh, uh, like to encourage you that um, homeschooling is um, a very uh, free and flexible option. You are taking responsibility for the education of your children if you file your own private school affidavit and uh, take that seriously. But uh, if that is what's best for your family, and it may very well be, then uh, go ahead and do that with confidence. And I would encourage you to be in contact with a local support group. If you haven't uh, already connected with somebody, take a look at, at that now and try to find a group that uh, you can connect with and um, be supported and offer support to others and help uh, just encourage the rest of the homeschool community. And also, uh, just as school gets started here, uh, be confident that what you're doing is legal and it's a great option for uh, educating your children in California. So that's it for now. Thanks so much and have a great day.